Welcome to Toots All. In this episode, I will provide an overview of Express.js. I will show you how to create basic Express.js application and explain what it consists of. I will also talk a little bit about Express.js middleware, which is a crucial part of this framework. First couple words about what Express.js is. As its website says, it's a minimal, flexible Node.js application framework that provides a robust set of features for web and mobile applications. The important word here is minimal. In fact, Express is a routing and middleware web framework with minimal functionality of its own. And we can add the functionality to Express by using third-party middleware. Let's go straight to the code and create our first Express.js application. To generate the Express application, we can simply call Express and follow it by name of our application. This will generate a number of files, uh, which we will look more carefully into right now. So here is the folder structure which was generated. The first folder is bin, which contains one JavaScript script, uh, www. And this is uh, this is script which uh, will start our application on uh, port number 3000 unless uh, otherwise specified. In a public uh, folder, folder uh, we can see images, JavaScripts, and style sheets. So basically, all uh, resources which should be publicly available will end up here. And by default, uh, we see that in style sheets folder, there is style.css file with some basic uh, style uh, predefined. In the roots folder, we'll find files uh, with our roots. <clears throat> so basically here is uh, what will determine how our uh, different requests for different URLs should be handled. And for example, uh, we can see that uh, in uh, index.js, by default, uh, we will return the, the index view. And all views are located in the views uh, directory. And we can see that those files have all .jade extension. That's because express.js uh, uses jade view framework by default. And what's interesting about jade template engine is that the white characters matter here. If we type tab or space, that all has a meaning in Jade. And uh, if we compare Jade with uh, HTML, we can see that it's a little bit uh, lighter and uh, we don't have that much overhead because, uh, because we don't have to close all the, tab, uh, all the tags um, as we used to do in uh, HTML. Some people like Jade, some people prefer different templates. Uh, that's a default one in Express, but if you if you use it for a while uh, and don't like it, you can uh, obviously uh, try different templates. Uh, for example, uh, EJS, which is very similar to HTML. The next file, which we see here, is package.json. This basically uh, defines all packages which we will be using in our application. And last but not least, and in fact probably is the most important piece of the application, is app.js file. And here we can see that in the first line, we require Express. Express is a Node.js module, and uh, like any other modules, we include it in our application uh, using require function. Below that, we can see that we require a bunch of other modules. Those are so-called middleware. And uh, we also include our roots. We initialize uh, the Express uh, application, we store uh, it in the app variable. And as I mentioned previously, Express uses the uh, Jade templating uh, engine by default, and this is how we, def uh, how we define it. The first line specifies what directory we want to store our views in, and uh, it basically says that in this case we want to store all views in uh, in the views directory in a underscore underscore their name which is uh, pointing to the 
path of our application. So basically, uh, this will set uh, the view directory uh, to this folder. And the second line uh, simply specifies that the view engine of our choice is Jade. Below, uh, we can see a bunch of app.use calls, which are specifying what middleware we want to use. The logger middleware is helpful for uh, logging additional information uh, during development to help debug our application. A body parser uh, will be necessary, especially when uh, we use forms in our applications. It will add body object in, to, to our request, and uh, in this way we will be able to access uh, post parameters. The cookie parser is uh, helpful in handling cookies. And uh, the last line here uh, defines our public directory, so the, uh, the folder where we will uh, store all our uh, publicly available resources. As I mentioned before, images, JavaScripts, and style sheets. The next two lines are specifying that we want to use uh, our roots and the uh, the roots from a roots.js file uh, will be accessible uh, in our default path and from users file it will be accessible after users types uh, address of our website uh, slash users. So once again if we go to those root files we can see that index.js uh, is specifying that by default we should display uh, index uh, view, which is displaying this index.jade uh, file. And in users.js, we actually don't render any uh, website, but instead we just uh, display respond with a resource uh, text. In the second part of our app.js file, we see some kind of error handling. So the first section here is responsible for catching 404 errors. Basically, if we get uh, to this uh, code, it means that our request was not handled uh, by any of other middlewares or by any of other routes. And in this case, it means that uh, the resource which user was looking for was not found, and that's why we can display 404 error. And uh, after we create the error, uh, we specify the error message and we specify the status uh, to be 404, we call the next function and we pass the error object to it so that the next middleware uh, will be able to handle uh, that error and display it appropriately. And here we see two very similar uh, blocks of code. The only difference here is this if statement, which says that in a, if our environment is set, is set to development mode, then we should display not only error message, like we have in both cases here, but also we should send the whole error object, which contain, contains the stack trace. And uh, that's why um, we have two separate uh, blocks uh, for that because even though stack, stack trace is very useful in debugging and uh, when we will be hitting errors we will want to take a look on a st stack trace to uh, identify the problem the cause of the problem earlier this information might be also very useful for someone uh, who doesn't necessarily um, have good intentions that could possibly uh, display some kind of vulnerabilities about our system and uh, reveal information which we don't want to show uh, to the outside world. So this piece of code um, displays the error view which is here and as we see it will display the error message, error status and error stack if we specify the error. Uh, objects. Uh, so when when we are in development mode. So let's go ahead and run our application. We can uh, do it by calling npm start, 
Uh, but before that, we should call npm install to install all our dependencies. And after that, we can call npm start. The application is uh, running. So let's go to the browser. And uh, here we can see uh, that our application is running and displaying uh, the very, <laughs> very uh, simple uh, home page. And uh, if we go to, to Roots, we can see that uh, we specified here that we should also handle uh, slash users uh, root and we should uh, s uh, return this text and response. Uh, so let's test it. Yep, here it is. So this is how you create basic express.js application. You can add new views to it, you can add roots in a similar way, how it's shown in a sample. You can also search for uh, what other middleware is available and uh, play with it, add uh, new middleware to the application and see how it works. If you like my screencast, make sure you don't miss the next episode, subscribe to the email newsletter, like us on Facebook, follow on Twitter and share with friends. Thank you for watching.